The following program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable telecommunications industry and your local cable company. Hi, I'm Reese Davis here in our ESPN studios. Welcome to our commercial free presentation of Sports Figures, where science meets sports. Today, champion surfer Rochelle Ballard, who you may have seen in the movie Blue Crush, is making waves with our Greg Abbey. Maybe some cool shorts and some shades would be good. Maybe a wetsuit. But most of all, you need waves. That's why surfers always get excited when they hear the words, Surf's up, dudes! You ever tried this? Well, this is pretty much how surfing works. I'm not kidding. The novelist Jack London once described surfers as rising like sea gods from the welter and spume of churning white. I don't know what that means, but it sounds good. If you stop to think about it, riding waves is a pretty wild thing. It's like riding water, dude! What the heck is a wave, anyway? Water's natural state is to be totally flat and smooth, right? No hills, no valleys. I mean, you put water into anything. A tub, a glass, the ocean, a pond. And water's natural tendency is to lay flat, like this. That's called a state of equilibrium. Now to get waves, we have to do something to disturb that equilibrium. That's called a disturbance. You see, when I hit the side of the tub, it transferred the energy to the water and we got waves. Now, there's another way to cause a disturbance if I drop this rock. See? Waves. When I lift the rock, I give the rock gravitational potential energy, GPE. When I drop the rock, the GPE was converted to kinetic energy, K. Now, when the rock hit the water, the kinetic energy was transferred to the water. We know that it was because we got waves. <sighs> There's nothing more relaxing than sitting on the beach and watching the energy roll in. See, that's all waves are, energy moving through the water. Just like these flames are energy moving through the air. So where does all this energy come from? To help us figure it out today, we've got Rochelle Ballard. Now, Rochelle has been on the World Championship Tour for 11 years. She holds the record for scoring two perfect tens in a single heat. She has been voted the most popular surfer the last three years, and she was featured in the movie Blue Crush. So I'd say she's up on her waves. So, Rochelle, what's the best time of year for surfing down here in uh, Southern California? During the winter. The winter? But that's the coldest part of the year. That's when the swells are generated out in the Pacific Ocean. The swells. So what do you mean? Like, how far out? Well, the storms generate, you know, even like a 1,000 miles away and head towards land. Then they push, the storms push the waves in towards shore? Exactly. Big winter storms out in the Pacific put lots of energy into the water. The wind makes contact with the surface of the water and disturbs it, transfers some of its energy to the water by pushing. That's what gets the waves going. The wind's energy is now traveling through the water in waves. Now that energy continues until it's transferred into something else. Like uh, here at the beach, that energy was put into moving the sand. Waves in the ocean can move pretty fast. These waves here probably started out in a storm a thousand kilometers out in the middle of the ocean four days ago and traveled 10 kilometers per hour night and day 
to arrive here right now. It's pretty crazy, right? So do you guys like watch weather reports, follow weather reports? Actually, we do. Um, a lot of times the night before, you'll check out the weather and uh, listen to buoys. And uh, actually, they're buoy readings. And what it is, it's, it reads the height and the seconds in between the swell lines. So you know, the next morning or even six hours later, the swell hits. And you know how high the waves are going to be, um, at what speed. And it actually gives you a clue to what direction and everything they're coming in. OK, most waves are caused by the wind. But what about a disturbance like this? Whew. An undersea earthquake has a lot of energy and can create a major disturbance in the water. Waves caused by earthquakes, uh, landslides, meteor impacts used to wrongly be called tidal waves. But now we call them tsunamis. Luckily, tsunamis don't happen very often. OK, so what can you guys tell me about waves? The wave is made up of a crest and a trough. Right, like if this line were the water's normal surface equilibrium, the crest would be the high point above the equilibrium. And the trough would be the low point below the equilibrium. The distance between two crests is the wavelength. Like the wavelength of this wave is one meter. OK, cool. Ocean waves are traveling waves, because obviously they're going somewhere. But here's the wild thing. It looks like the water is moving towards the beach, right? Well, guess what? It's not. When you're out in a boat and sitting with the engine turned off, the boat bobs up and down with the waves, right? But the boat itself doesn't move to the beach. Well, it's exactly the same with water. It moves up and down as the wave passes through it, but the water itself doesn't move to the beach. The energy passes through the water. Check this out. The boat shows us what's happening to the water as the energy passes through it. If we trace the boat's movement, we see that it's really moving in a circular pattern like this. Well, the water is moving exactly the same way. The disturbance forms a circular pattern in the water like this at the surface. Below the surface, the disturbance is less strong the deeper you go. Now here's something cool. The depth of the disturbance is equal to the wavelength of the wave, the distance from one crest to the next. Disturbance in the wave, you have to dive as deep as the wave length. Now, if you've ever ducked under a wave, you felt that circular motion. That circular motion is why waves break and why we can surf them. Uh, what about staying in shape for surfing? I mean, do you do specific? Yeah, I do. You know, one of the best things that you can do for surfing is to be able to keep. Uh, uh, some endurance going and uh, stamina and uh, you know keeping nice and loose uh, for, for technique. So I usually swim, uh, run and stretch. Like I do a lot, a lot of yoga. So it's cardio and strength. You need both. For sure, because there's times out in the ocean when uh, you know a big set comes through and you break your board or your leash breaks off, and uh, you're stuck out there in the middle of the ocean and you have to find your way back to land without a surfboard. What about nutrition? Do you watch what you eat or do you eat a lot of double cheeseburgers? <laughs> From time to time, I do. <laughs> but uh, I actually try and watch what I eat, and I try and eat lots of vegetables and um, you know the right proteins and everything. Sure. OK, so we know that the waves are caused by a disturbance. Energy from the wind is transferred to the water, and that energy pushes through the water in waves. The energy moves through the water by gravitational potential energy, GPE. And kinetic energy, KE. See, the water that's at the crest, above the level of equilibrium, has GPE. It accelerates down because of gravity. That gives the water KE, moving energy. This energy pushes the water past the equilibrium and forms the trough. See, waves are a constant transfer back and forth between GPE and KE, just like a skateboarder and a half pipe. See, as the skateboarder comes down one side, the GPE is converted to KE. Going up the other side, the KE is converted back to GPE. Out in the ocean, waves move along as gently rolling swells. So what causes them to pile up into massive breakers? Remember that circular motion we talked about? Well, that's why a wave breaks. Check it out. The water in a wave is moving in a circular motion. In the open water, there's nothing to interfere with that. But as a wave approaches shore, the water becomes shallower. Look what happens. 
the depth of the disturbance is the same as the wavelength. When the wave gets into water shallower than its wavelength, the lower part of the disturbance starts to encounter the bottom. And that slows down the water at the lower part of the disturbance. But the water up the crest is still moving at the same speed. This makes a circular pattern distorted through a lips like this. The crest starts to catch up to the trough and bunch up. So instead of a gentle slope from crest to trough, we end up with a steep, sheer face. That's what forms a surf line at the beach. The point where the wave breaks is where the water is too shallow to form the whole wave, so it turns over and breaks. Now, there's a formula for that. That's the point where the wave height is one-seventh of the wave length. You can see the water's circular motion really clearly with this kind of wave. It's a circular motion that makes the tube. Michelle, could you tell me a little bit about the tube? Sure. Uh, the tube's kind of a nucleus of the wave where, um, you know, the energy force of the wave is. And so, you know, naturally, it's going to, like, kind of put you in this awe state. And it's like a place where you feel like the seconds are longer than they really are. And you're like, your eyes are wide open, your mouth's wide open, and you're just, like, frozen in the moment. Sounds very zen. It is. It's great. It's the slope of the ocean bottom as it approaches the shore that determines how a wave will break. With a very shallow slope, the waves are called spilling breakers. They break for a long time, but you don't get much face. With a really steep bottom slope, the waves don't really break. They roll onto the steep beach and cause a lot of damage. They're called surging breakers. A bottom slope somewhere in between lets the waves pile up and curve over themselves. Plunging breakers are those nice tubes that surfers love. OK, so now we know how a wave works, but how do you surf it? Surfing is no different than skateboarding, skiing, or snowboarding down a hill. If you were to freeze a wave in motion, it would look like this, a ramp for you to surf down. Gravity just pulls you down. That's why the timing of catching a wave is so important. Before a wave breaks, the face isn't steep enough to ride. You want to catch it just as the ramp forms. If the wave were frozen, you would just surf down to the bottom of it. That'd be it. The difference with the wave is that the water is rushing up the face of the wave, and that changes everything. So as the surfer moves down, the water is pushing back up. That upward force works against gravity so that the surfer doesn't slide down to the bottom all at once. It's pretty cool, huh? Surfing is just like walking down and up escalator. See, as I walk down, the stairs keep moving up, so I stay in the same place. Surfers don't actually ride down the face of the wave because you'd end up losing your momentum and the wave would just pass you by. By cutting across the face of the wave, you can slow your descent downhill. Cutting across basically makes the hill less steep, so you have less downhill force. That means that the water's up force can keep you at the crest much longer. And so you're basically using every part of the wave possible. You're drawing your lines off the wave at the bottom of the surface. You're using the top of the lip. You're riding the lip. And you can even use the lip to air off of it and do what's called aerials or tricks. A wave is really energy moving through the water, so a surfer is really surfing energy. So unlike a hill, you never have to reach the bottom, as long as the energy keeps going. Thanks to wave machines like this, you can surf anywhere. So Rochelle, the sport keeps changing. Uh, what are some of the latest innovations in surfing? Basically, you have something like uh, toe surfing that's pretty amazing, actually. Um, what it is is you have like jet skis that take you out like on the outer reefs and you get more speed that way so that you can actually take off on the wave before the wave breaks. You're actually riding swell right. before it becomes an actual wave. Okay guys, so what do we learn? The water is normally flat, in equilibrium, and less disturbed. Disturbance adds energy to water, and that's what waves are, moving energy. Most ocean waves are caused by wind energy. The energy moves through the water in a circular pattern. Unless the water is too shallow for the disturbance to make a circle. That's when peaks form and the wave breaks. And that's when we can surf them. Well, I don't know, the water looks pretty good, guys. Surf's up, let's go. Woo! Well, that's it. I'd like to thank Rochelle Ballard and our students, Ferris, Ryan, Melissa, and Ryan, for helping us out today on ESPN Sports Triggered. Surfing science!
ESPN is proud of the many awards that Sports Figures has received, and we want to thank all the great athletes who have donated their time to help you put your brain in the game. ESPN Sports Figures is presented commercial free for educators to tape and use in the classroom. For a free teacher's curriculum, to order the Sports Figures series, or if you have questions or comments, visit our website at ESPNSportsFigures.com. You can also call 1-800-565-0452. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Sports, sports Figures, figures. Put, put your, your brain, brain in the, the game. game. The preceding program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable telecommunications industry and your local cable company.